guys <clears throat> what's up guys welcome back and this week we're here to talk about off-season pro tips so you often hear professionals going into the off season and that's November and they go back into the season around February. During the off season, people take their time to kind of reset their mind and work on parts of their game that they think they should improve on. In a perfect scenario, that's possible for everyone, but some of us are restricted because of our geographical location. So I live in Ohio, typically from January to April, it's snowing and if there's not snow on the ground, it's super muddy because the snow had melted and it's not dried up. So I had to find ways to keep practicing to be able to compete when I go back into the season, especially playing against people that have been practicing in warm weather all off season. So I reached out to some pros that I knew resided in the north that particularly deals with being trapped indoors because of the snow. I asked them about their specific off-season routines and maybe some tips that they wanted to share with you guys. So I asked a significant amount of people and I compiled a pretty good list. A lot of them are really repetitive, people saying the same thing over and over again, which you'll have. But then it was really interesting that each individual that I asked had something different to say than everyone else that I asked. So I compiled a list of seven professional tips on how to train during the off-season. Also, as I was going through reading all of these, I thought that seven was a good number because of the shirt that I had on today. Shout out to Savage Apparel for this awesome shirt. And I have their pants on, I don't know if you can see, um, but super comfortable. I'll put a link in the description for you to be able to check out their website if you're interested. Tip number one, this was pretty unanimous with everybody agreeing or replying back in some way of saying that putting is very important. In the grand scheme of things, while you're playing disc golf and throwing discs, putting is one of the easier things to be able to manage while the weather is kind of poopy because you don't have to throw the disc far. You don't have to be putting a lot of energy into anything, thinking that you're gonna slip and fall on the teapot. So a couple things with that, if you don't go outside to practice putting, is to get a basket that you can put indoors. Now, like I live in an apartment right now, so I don't have a basket. I live on the third story, so I don't wanna be causing ruckus um, when I'm hitting the chains or anything like that. So I don't practice here. Luckily, I have a place where I can practice at Hazy Shade. So I just drive a little bit and I'm able to practice indoors there. I did wanna mention that maybe if you are putting indoors, the Innova Skill Shot basket is relatively quiet compared to the rest of the baskets. The Innova Skill Shot is one of those fold up cloth baskets. So it's not the best basket to practice on, but it's something that you can actually throw at. And because of the cloth, it's not super loud. Another thing with practicing putting is to check out the Perfect Putt 360 app. That's something that makes putting a little more interesting, especially when you're indoors and maybe you only have a hallway where you're putting the same way over and over again and you can't really move around. The Perfect Putt 360 app makes you putt from 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet. It keeps your score on how many you make in a row or if you missed the first and last one and you're set or things like that. And so the goal is to get to 360 points. With the putting, Holly Finley had a good point and she said, imagine how easy 15 footers would be during a tournament setting after you've been smashing them all winter in your hallway. She has a point. Number two. So this was also pretty unanimous. Almost everyone mentioned that you should be throwing in some form. So most people mentioned that they have a basement where they have an, a net that they throw into and in essence that replaces field work. And here, Haley King mentioned that she uses a pocket disc. These are cotton discs that you can throw at the wall to practice your form. That's something to keep in mind if you don't have a net or if you don't have a lot of room to throw something, you can throw this little pocket disc at the wall and it doesn't hurt anything nor does it make a lot of noise. So pretty good idea. Number three, so keeping your body in shape in some form whether that's working out, eating healthy, stretching routinely, things like that. Something that I personally do is go to the gym five days a week just to stay active because I'm used to walking so much during the disc golf season. And I don't walk a lot anymore because I'm stuck inside. So in lieu of that, I work out. I know a lot of professional disc golfers that work with Seth Muncy for Disc Golf Strong. He does have a very cool app that you can download. So that's something that I know a lot of people do that you can also do too. Number four, now we start going into more specific things that each professional was telling me that I thought was super interesting, that was worthy of being on my top seven things to tell you guys. So mindset, staying positive 
and being focused. It's really hard to be trapped inside. <laughs> I say trapped like I'm stuck in this little box. <laughs> I feel like I'm trapped because I can't go outside. I mean, I could, but it's cold. <laughs> so what I mean by that is not letting yourself down. Um, I found myself doing that a couple times each year. I'm watching my friends go practice in Arizona or in California or all these warm places and they're in shorts and a t-shirt and I'm over here going to work looking like a marshmallow let alone do I want to throw a disc outside it hurts my fingers when the disc comes out I don't want to mess up my footwork slipping on ice or anything like that and so it gets pretty discouraging but you have to stay positive through it all and know that you can do some of these things to still keep yourself trained to be able to go back out into the season and perform well so with mindset Hannah Macbeth said I listen to podcasts on sports psychology and overall just stay intentional and disciplined in what my commitments are. Something I wanted to add was to be intentional with what you're doing. So I was at the gym earlier today and I saw this guy on a machine and I kind of like, I didn't purposefully follow him around, but you know, we were kind of going in the same areas of the gym. He was really lazily doing the motions of the workout. So like on these leg machines, he was putting in the work with his legs, but like his upper body was like just super relaxed rather than, I don't know. If you're gonna do something, do it with purpose and be intentional about it. Even though he was working out, I feel like it's a better workout when, like, with good posture, I don't know. You get what I'm saying? He's probably getting the same workout that I am. He just looks like he's way more comfortable doing it, but to each their own. <laughs> Number five, be prepared. So we talked about kind of preparing your mindset, your mental state, but being physically prepared. Adidas makes these awesome waterproof shoes that you can wear. That's all I've worn since I found them. I'll put a link in the description below for their website so you can check out the shoes if you want. You have to specifically get the Gore-Tex shoes because they're waterproof and I can walk through snow and you can play in the rain and your feet stay pretty dry, which is awesome because wet feet suck. Aside from shoes, keeping your hands really warm are a must when you're playing in the cold. I hate having cold, cold fingers because when you throw discs in the cold, your fingers hurt too. And when your hand doesn't work, it's just all bad. My personal secret is that I have mittens that I wear while I play and I put hot hands inside of them. If you wear gloves, you can't put the hot hands in by your fingertips because there's no room for them like mittens. So that's how I keep my fingers warm. Number six, to go or to not go outside? So here I kind of had two different answers on each end of the spectrum, but I think there's a happy medium to them both. Sandy Hendel, she's my Canadian friend, way more North than I am. She said, spending time putting at the YMCA and when the weather is above zero, we get to our local course and just tough it out. I'm pretty sure she's saying zero degrees Celsius, which means 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So I mean, below freezing, she goes outside. Now on the other end of the spectrum, I asked Ragna Big Day. She is from Michigan, so she's a little more north than I am. She said, practicing with terrible footing will have you adjust your run up, footing and form, and it'll take you longer to get back into a good groove trying to repair the damage. So I kind of see where they're both coming at. So going outside when it's cold, but maybe not so snowy and slippery, but then again, not going at all when it is super slippery because I can definitely tell when I'm trying to be careful on the tee pad, even if it's raining, sometimes I don't trust the tee pad. So I noticed myself kind of changing my form to throw with more upper body than putting my legs into it because I'm scared that my feet are gonna slip. So keeping those things in mind, just find your happy medium of when you wanna go outside or when you shouldn't go outside. Number seven. Don't be a couch potato. So this all kind of revolves around, you know, being healthy and working out and staying active, going to putt, whatever. Andrew Marweed said, I play basketball to stay active in the winter. He also said a lot more, but it fell under the categories of what everybody else said. So do something, maybe you go to yoga every couple days or you're walking your dog or you jog around your neighborhood, whatever it is that you're doing to stay active is better than just being a couch potato. That's all I have to say about that. So going through a quick rundown of all seven things one more time. Number one, putting. Number two, throwing into a net or using a pocket disc. Number three, 
keeping your body in shape, stretching, eating healthy. Number four, having a good mental mindset. Number five, being prepared physically. Number six, to go or to not go outside. That's your judgment call. And number seven, not being a couch potato. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you to all of my friends that responded with teens and their tips to share. Comment below if you think of something that I didn't discuss that you think is very helpful because I'm curious on what other people do. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.